Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Sick of making Kydex sheaths with a Kydex press? There's a better way. But... Okay, so today I'm gonna update you guys on a project that I started about a year ago. It's a Kydex vacuum press, sitting right over here. Now, I showed a sort of proof of concept of it about a year ago, and uh, I'll link to that if you want to, uh, to take a look at that. So if you make knives, your customers are always looking for sheaths. Now, one thing you can do about this is to just sub that job out to specialists or you can buy pre-made leather sheaths. But for the type of knives that I make, most of my customers want Kydex sheaths. And so they have to be made specific to each knife. Can't be generic, and that's just baked into the cake with making Kydex sheaths. Now, one of the things about Kydex sheaths, anybody who's made them knows this, is it's really easy to make a just bone simple and not very good sheath. But to, to make a really good one is just super hard. Now in the past for my Tactics Armory blades, I had a sheath guy who made each one by hand using a Kydex press. And to get them right, it just took a lot of labor and the cost of the sheath, which you know a lot of buyers look at as really just some kind of throwaway, is actually a pretty good little chunk of the cost of the knife. So you know, for many moons, I've been searching for a way to make Kydex sheaths that would be, and this is first and foremost, made to a really high quality standard. But, you know, I also wanted them to be reasonably versatile and uh, also cheap and simple to manufacture in a high quality way. So the system that I came up with is to try and do all of that simultaneously. And that's what I'm gonna be showing here. Like I said, I had a proof of concept a while back, but what I'm showing here is where I really just kind of finally landed in this whole process. Now, I will warn you, this is very CNC centric, but if you were considering doing this yourself, you could use a much less expensive bench top router system to do this, and you'd accomplish basically the same thing. That said, still pretty gear heavy. Until I went back and watched the video, I'd actually forgotten how much I'd changed since the original version of this thing. So even if you've seen the original, this works pretty differently. Originally, I was using a membrane, but now, well, anyway, here it is. I'm pulling a vacuum with this cheap little HVAC type pump from Harbor Freight. Then some flexible hose runs to the main vacuum unit. So basically what you've got is this top plate, which has a whole bunch of drilled and tapped quarter 20 holes. So you can move these little clamps, these toggle clamps back and forth. All knives obviously are not the same size. And so I wanted to be able to provide for different sizes of little mold plates and so there's a there's a hold down feature right here and if i had to make bigger knives or smaller knives i could do different size plates here and i could move these toggle clamps in and out so there are actually three layers here the top plate is three-quarter inch aluminum and then the second plate is three-quarter inch HDPE plastic and then underneath that you've got a Pearson pallet system so I can lift this up put it down repeatedly onto this Pearson pallet here lock it in there and it's not going anywhere so uh, this plate here is basically just a spacer so that there's room for the vacuum pipe to go out of the of the plate here the fixture of course all of these molds are uh, movable so this uh, the bottom of the, of the mold and the uh, top of the, uh, of the plate here are both smooth enough that you can hold a pretty good vacuum on there. So the, uh, the air is only going to go through these little, these little holes, these little channels in the mold and suck the, um, 
suck kydex down there on top. And by putting this on top and putting a little pressure on it, that assures you that you've got enough of a seal there that the, you get a good strong vacuum there to suck down that, um, that kydex. And so I've got rebated into this plate in addition to these little holes to capture the feet. This allows air to circulate through here and to go up in the holes wherever you drill them. So these are about a sixteenth of an inch deep, maybe a hundred thou, something like that. And then in the center, obviously you have the hole for the, uh, the vacuum inlet. Real quick here guys, if you've been enjoying all the free content I've been offering on YouTube for the past 15 years, yep, you heard that right, it's been almost 15 years now, and you wanna give back to the channel, there's a way, it's called Patreon. All of my Patreon supporters at any pledge level get plans to most of my builds, plus other bonuses for higher pledge levels, plus you get the good feeling of helping out the channel. So help us help you. Link in the cards and description. Thanks, and now back to work. Okay, so that's the gear. Let's just quickly run through the whole process. I'll be making a sheath for my latest knife from Tactics Armory, the Shadow 2. I may actually throw in a few shots of my neck knife, the Luna 2, and you can find all those at tacticsarmory.com if you're so moved. But I begin with a giant sheet of kydex that I chop up into standard size pieces to fit the mold with enough excess to make a good seal. Then I heat the kydex using a t-shirt press. I've used a bunch of different methods of heating kydex and I by far prefer the t-shirt press over, you know, toaster ovens and griddles and all that stuff. Anyway, I make a unique mold or sometimes a couple of them, depending on the type of sheath, with these little feet that fit repeatably into these pockets. So once it's set, it'll, it'll stick there. All this stuff was milled on my Haas. Once the kydex is about 350 degrees, I'll flop it on the mold, put this frame on top, and then tighten the thing down with these toggle clamps. The pressure from the toggle clamps is enough to give plenty of pressure to assure a good seal so that you've pulled a good vacuum and that'll give you a good impression of the actual mold itself. Blast it with a little compressed air to cool it down. Once it's cool, it's ready for step two. So at that point, I run a program to drill rivet holes. and then it'll cut the outline. Now, if you're doing everything right, you can kind of get into a rhythm with it, so you pretty much start the next piece of kydex at about the time you run the program. That way there's not too much downtime and you can be reasonably efficient and pump out a bunch of these at once. After you piled up a bunch of them, you chop the sheaths free of the tabs, put the rivets in, Then grind off the tabs and clean everything up so it's nice and smooth. And the final assembly with the belt clip. And that's it. So a few qualifying points about all this. First, obviously you got to have some kind of CNC gear to do it, you know, the way I, that I'm doing it here. You know, I CNC the sheath mold, but that's something that you could actually uh, just use the knife itself, just like you would do if you were using a press. Um, it'd have to be sort of purpose built into some kind of block so that you could move it around and, and the dimensions wouldn't change. But that is accomplishable. There's a really nice video by TJ Schwartz where he shows a pretty ingenious way of doing exactly that. Um, so, you know, check that out if you're uh, inclined to be doing something like this. Um, and like I said, you could use a CNC router 
to do all this, you don't have to have a big you know, industrial CNC machine or something. So at this point, I've pretty much got my oldest CNC machine, my Tormach right here, set up as a dedicated sheath machine. I mean, there's no reason I have to, um, but I've got the Haas over there that I do most of my things on, so you know, not having to move all this stuff right here is pretty handy. Um, but, you know, I've got this Pearson pallet system on here, so breaking it down and setting it up is really actually pretty easy. Now, the other qualifying point is that whatever knives you're putting into the sheath, they gotta be made to pretty tight standards or they're just not gonna fit reliably. But that's kind of baked into the cookie. If you're, you know, if you've got a CNC machine and you're making knives on it, you're, you're doing that already. So that's, you know, that's not really a, a big deal. Obviously, though, it just, it's something that doesn't make sense if you're making one-off knives, each one different from the next. So the one thing I will say about the CNC side is that it takes a lot of iterations to dial in the mold. It looks like, oh, you just throw it on there and, you know, it's one after the other. And that's what you're aiming for, but it takes a lot of iterations to dial in that mold and get all the little techniques right so that everything's dead perfect because it's really repeatable. You know, you want, you want this real nice click in, click out. Um, you don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. You don't want it to rattle, all that stuff. But the payoff is that once you get there, it's done. Um, I mean, this might seem silly, but I can make knives to my standards all day long. But getting a sheath right, I really found that whole process to be stressful. It was just something that I was constantly you know, I had to inspect every single one. Each one's a little bit different. You know, the click in on this one's a little different from that one. If they're one offs handmade, they're just never quite the same. And I found that really frustrating. Anyway, ridiculous amount of work that went into this whole thing, but worth it for me. Um, so the thing that I would say is most significant about this system, you know, for a video like this, is that it really, uh, illustrate something that I'm passionate about, which is that, you know, the tools that are available today that a real normal person can, can buy um, allow pretty normal people uh, to become just straight up small manufacturers. Um, I think a lot of people probably watch a video like this and they say, hey, look, I'm not interested in being a production guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to buy a CNC machine. So why would I care about this? And sure, I get it. But one of the things that you'll see if you watch a lot of my videos is that I try to show everything from making a knife using zero power tools, filing it to shape, all that kind of thing, to really automated kind of approaches. I mean, I feel like we're lucky enough to be living in the golden age of knife making. If you want to use really traditional approaches, hammer it to shape over on the anvil, uh, that's an option that's available to you. You want to go low tech and use really cheap or manual gear, you know, just make a couple, three knives a year, hey, do it. Um, and if you want to gear up like crazy and take a run at manufacturing, that's something that's in reach. Point is, there is no right way to do this. There's just your way. All right, guys, thanks for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com